I don't know whether I would class this as a B1 boot or not because Boreal, being Spanish and weird, don't have that rating system. But The only downside to this jacket is to do with its length and getting in and out of it. It's a little bit like trying to get a snake into a sock. <laughs> trying to wriggling and trying to get. His next email said, and we don't ever recommend that anyone repel in our belt. So that is, I'm putting this in because that's core essentials disclaimer. Don't repel or abseil using just that belt. They're designed to carry gear and or guns, not repel in. They are weight rated for EDC gun carry or the range, but you should only repel in a harness. I agree with that, but it doesn't stop me doing stupid things for the sake of YouTube. Hello and welcome to Original Outdoor Gear, or the Original Outdoor Gear Show, or whatever we're going to end up calling this, because we should have thought of a name before we started hitting record. Uh, this is going to be a, hopefully, weekly feature from us, or thereabouts, sometimes done very weekly indeed. This is going to, a sh going to be a show about outdoor gear, outdoor clothing and equipment, and this is going to be mostly on our YouTube channel, which is probably what you're watching this through now, or through our dedicated gear website, Original Outdoor Gear, or you might be one of those few very special people that listen to this as an audio-only podcast, but if you are listening to this, you really are missing a visual element of this. You don't see that we're sat in a field somewhere with a definitely not six planks nailed together on a trestle table. Hmm. So, I'm Richard. And I'm Amy. And I don't let her talk. So, <laughs> if you followed our online channels, social media or website or something like that for a while, then you probably know that we do a lot of stuff around gear anyway, but we that is not what our business is. We run an outdoor skills training and consultancy business called Original Outdoors. But we have several brand offshoots from that. So we have some we do some work in the media and TV and film. So we have Original Outdoor Media and then we wanted to have a dedicated gear website because we do so many gear reviews and talk about gear so much now that we thought it was worth having a separate brand for that so that's what this is this is original outdoor gear does that all make sense do you think yeah i do yeah yeah so we're going to be doing gear reviews and that's what we're going to do today we've got a few bits of gear here we're going to talk about uh, but as this is the first show we should probably say how things are going to work so we are giving our honest and unpaid opinion by that i mean the importers or manufacturers or distributors or whoever it is who sends us gear because we have an online channel and people look at our stuff nobody has paid us to say nice things about their gear when we're paid to make a video it's either a skills video or something like that or it's something completely unrelated to what you're watching now but for these gear videos none of these manufacturers have paid for us to do this this costs us money and we're talking into a nearly two thousand pounds worth of camera there and another 400 quid a camera there and microphones and things that's not to brag about how much we've spent it's just if anybody's watching this and thinking huh, look at all the free gear they're getting and all the money they're making from it i can assure you we're not also when manufacturers send us stuff we don't we don't do any of the affiliate thing or anything like that no. some you see some channels particularly for chinese torch brands where they say and if you want to buy this look at our link in the description below and use the code whatever whatever because they make a small amount of money from every sale processed through that link we don't have those links we don't have affiliate links for the brands we talk about we do have some links underneath this video but they're mainly for the camera gear and things like that because people want to know what microphone that is or what camera we're using there or what lens or when we use the drone what kind of drone it is so we we make a tiny bit of money from amazon that way but that's only to make money from the people who are trying to steal ideas from us sounds fair yeah to me. <laughs> really does the other thing is that if we don't like a review item that we are sent or something that we've bought then what we do is we give feedback to the people who produce it. We don't just write a really horrible review about it and paste it all over the internet. We try to give constructive criticism and we tend to just quietly leave it under the bush somewhere yeah. and, uh, yeah, not publicly humiliate anybody. Yeah, because these things, it's not... 
there's no value in us saying this is terrible don't buy it because that's not really of much use to you or someone else it's not a recommendation then it's my personal opinion that something is or your personal opinion that something is terrible but occasionally we do get sent things that we just open out and have a look at and go there's there's not only no way we can recommend this to anyone we can't use it ourselves we can't use it with our clients and we don't think you should be selling it to the general public either or at least not in its current state and we have done that we do that a couple of times every year we we receive something and then look at it take some photos make some notes parcel it back up and send it back to the manufacturer and say this is this is bobbins but this is the better way to make it better mm -hmm. Sometimes you yeah. could do that in the comments for this video if you want, if you want me to learn how to talk in a straight line. Better. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm struggling with that apparently. That could be useful actually. <laughs> That's it. The only other thing to say is that some of the items we're gonna we are going to talk about, we have paid for ourselves. Some of the things we have been sent by manufacturer, distributor, PR agency, whatever it is. So when it's things that we've paid for ourselves, they're gonna have this symbol and when they are things that we have been sent by a PR agency, manufacturer, whoever, by a company that have sent it to us, it's going to have this symbol. So you know whether we're talking about something that we paid for with our own money or whether it's something that has been sent to us for free. So with all that to one side, who's go is it? Is it my go first? Yep. Right. You'll go first. So we're going to do a couple of items every week and every show, but I'm going to start with those which are some slightly out of focus boots at what point is it bad luck to put just is it, they're no longer new so it's no longer bad luck to put them on the table i think if you've worn them 4.75 <laughs> times it's exactly calibrated that's okay yeah also you've got them the wrong way around they are the wrong way around is that bad luck <laughs> oh, yeah it's it's if they're my dancing shoes i've had these for about a year these are the boreal kovac full grain boots so these were sent to me by uh, the Boreal UK people um, after talking to them at a military trade show, an outdoors military trade show, the uh, one organised by our friends over at Brigantes Consulting. Free plug for you there, guys, that no one cares about. So these are, these are fairly stiff, all-weather boots. They... I'm pausing there because normally, well, at least in the UK, um, you tend to hear boots have a rating on them. So B0, B1, B2, or B3, and that relates to how stiff they are. And then you have crampon compatibility for winter boots. So the spiky things that go on the bottom of mountaineering boots um, for snow and ice, they are then rated so that you put a pair of c1 crampons could go against a pair of b1 boots or c2 boots or b2 boots but a pair of c2 crampons could only go against a pair of b2 boots or stiffer i don't know whether i would class this as a b1 boot or not because boreal being spanish and weird don't have that rating system but they're pretty stiff my my sample size is a 47 i think Something like, yeah, 47. And I'm normally a Euro 47 or 48, so I've got massive feet. They're still fairly stiff, even at that length, because you find this with boots that, like, I do, like long, boots that are meant to be stiff, mm. when they get to the larger sizes, like the stiff to there, to where normal people's feet finish. But my clown feet carry on a little bit further. Like they've just kind of stuck an extra bit of rubber on the end. Yeah, they're exactly like that. So they, But they're still pretty stiff for that. Uh, they have a high rand, around here this rubber bit that rises up from the sole uh, it's full grain leather as the i think the name suggests you've got a decent lacing system to here good anchors here the tongue gets is attached all the way up they're fairly comfortable and they've got a nice aggressive tread underneath so i blagged these i must say because i did a review for uk hill walking about two years ago or something like that or a year yeah. ago no, two years ago for the Boreal Odessa, something like that. Another boot, or sort of a, a lower tech um, hiking soft leather boot. And they were fine, they were comfortable. Um, but I wanted something slightly more aggressive because before COVID hit, we were meant to be doing some work um, with some military and security clients through one of our brands, through Outdoor Professional. And I was going to be spending a lot of time in the mountains working with people working on difficult ground. 
so I wanted these boots to be used for that and then that was February and then March and the world end last year and the world ended and then I didn't get to use them so these have been used on mostly non-technical grounds since I've done a few mountain days with them during the summer and during other work that we've done but mm. I've not used them that much have I no so not a great deal so I don't think I've got uh, I don't think I've got too much critical to say about them yet other than these were quite tight when I first got them. No, this whole thing about you have to break boots in, that hasn't really been true for boots made in the last 10 years, for mountaineering boots, because they're, they're made differently now. But these were quite stiff and tight, and I did actually think, have I ordered the wrong size from the rep? But I was I was too afraid to go and ask the, the rep for the bigger size, so because yeah. he's already sent me free boots. Um, so I was going to struggle on with them and just do the review and not mention it. But actually, having worn them, I've done about a couple of hundred miles in these now, in some fairly wet conditions. Having worn them in the wet and stretched the leather out, they're really comfortable now. So these are like old school leather mountaineering boots and you have to, you have to stretch them out. But they do become comfortable. It's got a decent sole on there and yeah, there's a, there's a few, have you got some bits from the website there that come yeah, from it? Yeah, I do. So... We've Let got printouts here. Find the right page. We're so prepared. I know. Kovac full grain. So it's uh, one piece apparently. Of 2.6 millimeter water repellent and reinforced grain leather. Hmm. And the lining yeah. is one piece with the dry line system yeah. for better impermeability and breathability. That's my banky insole. Is that yours or theirs? Well, that's theirs. That's the Borealis okay. one. That's, but it's it's nothing too technical. It's just a soft insole insert. And then the sole is that um, Vibram, which everything seems to be Vibram nowadays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah. By Vibram, it's like YKK zips. The, yeah. Everyone makes the stuff. It started off mainly on climbing shoes, from what I recall. And yeah, then it, it was sticky. made its way into everything Every, else. Yeah, it was sticky rubber, but now they do all sorts of different compounds. Um, yeah. And they say, at Boreal, each leather is individually inspected for the slightest imperfection and cut by hand to ensure a high quality finish. Which is uh, nice to know, really. Standard marketing bump on every website. These are just things we've pulled from the um, websites of the manufacturers, so. Yeah. There's nothing particularly technical other than the, uh, the sole and the lining. The leather's just leather. Yeah. Um, if you're looking at weights, then the size 7, UK sizing... It's about half my size. <laughs> yeah, is, is uh, 1,520 grams, so that's 1.5 kilos, so that'd be which a three, is, is about 3 pound. Boom. No, per pair. Per pair, okay, yeah. yeah, so, yeah, that's about 2 kilos, so, yeah. So that's, that's yeah. not They're, too heavy, but they're quite high. You prefer yeah. a higher, higher cuff. I do, so. because of my monster genetics i don't know it so these are good all round all year boots they'd be too stiff and too heavy probably for most british summers but they'd be at the lighter end of things for british winters if you want something that'll do the job all year round then they're a good start they're also quite traditional in their style and will probably show them in other videos and other um things other posts and reviews we might do a dedicated review for these but mm. that there's nothing fancy about them really which is for some people is exactly what they want they want a nice solid reliable pair of well-made boots that fit them and boot manufacturers build their boots around a certain foot shape so a ratio of foot length and width at the forefoot and heel shape and all of these things so if you find one brand that fits you it's a good idea to stick within that brand because they should be made to the same proportions as your feet so having another option on the uk market is a good thing because if you don't find boots that fit you then you can try to go to a pair that stock go to a pair go to a shop that stocks boreal and go and try these that's about all there is to say about them really the nice solid boots and I didn't think they would be as comfortable as they are, but they have been, but it took a while to break them in. And yeah, as you can see from the mud on them, they get fairly regular use. So 
They're nice and easy to clean because they're full grain leather as well. It means you can just use a damp cloth to wipe off the worst of the mud and then put whatever waterproofing treatment you'd prefer yeah. on top of that. It's not got to have anything fancy like some of the technical fabrics. No, and I do like a, good. I do like leather because um, whatever the opposite of a vegan is, I'm that. So they're they're good. Well, that'll sound lovely. Yeah, on the, the lovely, <laughs> the lovely <laughs> bang on the microphone. Right. That's me. What have you got? My turn. Yes, your turn. Yay! You get to speak now. So, I have chosen to review when I've zipped it up. Sorry about this. As you said, really well prepared. That's pretty much zipped up. So, this is actually something which I bought with my hard earned money. As seen by the symbol below. Yes, the lovely symbol. This is the Helicon Tex Woodsman Anorak. So, cover your face there with the, <laughs> the sea of coyote it's brown <laughs> so this isn't um a military thing quite a lot of the helicon tech stuff rotates around guns and everyday carry it's fairly tactical it's fairly tactical Hash. wear yeah yeah and this has gone more to the bushcraft side of of the range um it's very much aimed at that people but it's actually based on their mistral jacket so the mistral jacket has velcro um or hook and loop sorry on each of the shoulders and it also has reinforced elbow pads this doesn't have either of those but it has slightly different fabric which makes it more suitable for wearing in a bushcraft campfire type setting so the front fabric on it is um dura 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 canvas and <laughs> apparently it's fire spark resistant so that's really good if you're by a campfire there tends yeah. to be a lot of sparks around there and that's one of the prime things that i actually bought it for because most of the jackets that i own are like this and if i wear <laughs> this by a campfire it's just going to be leaking feathers all over the place it's going to look like a colander pretty quickly isn't yeah. It? yeah yeah i have experience of this i worked in the outside burning brash and things for years and you just wore old coats for anything where you knew you were going to get sparks landing on you. So I like that this is essentially fire spark resistant. <laughs> the um, Don't try too hard to set me on fire. The back, however, is made out of a different fabric. It's got a bit more stretch in it and a bit more breathability. And that fabric, it's not even written on here, it's called Storm stretch. That's the one. Storm stretch. But you actually look Thank at you, Richard. you can't see the colour difference really between those two. Not really. You have to look up close and you can see it's more a difference in the weave. Um, so this is in Coyote. They do six colourways. There are five which are earthy tones and one which is less earthy, which is the one which Richard ended up with, which is red and well, it's called Crimson Sky and Ash Grey, that colour. This is Coyote. You've learned the names of things. So you're much I've better. I've been writing the review. <laughs> oh, okay. You're better. Pre Amy's better prepared than I am. Always. So, the back of this is more stretchable and more breathable, which is nice because if you're carrying a pack or you're hunching over to do things like sawing or axing or creating your fire, it's got that little bit more movement around in it. Um, it's got loads of fantastic features, actually. This I absolutely love it. It's quite long in its um, length, so it covers and means you don't get that horrible draft gap at the bottom of your back when you bend over, you don't show off your builder's bum. And it also has zips which go all the way from the bottom, which are pressed it. Yeah, it goes from about there, doesn't it? To yeah, so you can have just pit zips open, just like that or you can have it really all the way up vented or you can use that so you can access pockets that you've got on your undergarments perhaps and i often layer this over the top of my down or other bulky layers like wool mid layers and things like that because they're my warmth but this then protects them from the other outer elements because it's such a tight weave fabric it doesn't snag on anything so you can be pushing your way through trees and branches crouching down next to gorse or something and you'll feel the prickles through but it doesn't damage the fabric in any way you won't get rips in it in that sort of way the hood's massive you yeah. can wear whatever stupid hat you like underneath or helmet this. particularly or helmet yeah. yeah 
and it is adjustable with some velcro and one of the best things is that it has a massive kangaroo pouch pocket which is really there. deep it's enough to fit i don't even know how many ordnance survey maps into and it has its own or little two claymore organizer. mines two clay have you tested that theory i know a man okay it has some features in like a little loop that you can hook your keys onto so you don't lose them when you bend over and everything inevitably falls out of your kangaroo pouch and some of the little bits where you can section things off in your pouch it even has um so that you can listen oh, yeah, listen to your tunes and put your headphones through so you've got side pockets which are mesh lined that you can just you can shove your hands in and they're a bit of a hand warmer but i i love this i've had so much wear out of this and one of your favorite things is that you can actually wax them so it's naturally well naturally it's made to be water resistant it's not yeah. waterproof so it keeps off showers um but richard i've waxed it with the sort of wax that you're meant to use on horse rugs when you put leave horses out all winter and they have they, they put rugs on the outside well people do yeah. there's one over there wearing one um <laughs> they put rugs on the outside of them and they um you put wax on it it's like a a tougher thicker version of the wax you put on a barber wax jacket or something like that so it's water repellent it's not quite grease it's you have to wax the jacket and then run a hair dryer over it or in my case hold it next to the, the wood burning stove mm. um, and it melts into the fibers of the jacket and then stays there so i saw somebody um i forget his name but he does the outdoor gear reviews the american guy who always does different things he does very good gear reviews but he was talking about this and saying that some people wax it and it ruins the breathability i've not noticed any drop in breathability with it being waxed i am a sweaty bastard when i move moving around with a rucksack on i'm walking uphill no matter what my fitness levels are no matter what my body fat percentage is at that time i'm still a sweaty bastard it's just something in my genetics i don't sweat as much in this and as, as I would do in a shell layer or something like that or even some soft shells so that's quite a good compromise for me it's water repellent like a soft shell a bit like this but it's a little bit more breathable it's also still spark proof it's tough it's abrasion resistant mm -hmm. and I have no problem pushing through undergrowth with this or scraping it against a rock what I have used it for uh, mine because I've, I've got the red and I lost the microphone then i've got the red and gray one um i've used it as a top layer for times when i'm carrying logs or chainsawing or moving through undergrowth when i don't really need the waterproofing but i want a sh a layer to protect either the clothing underneath or my skin and just something that i can get wet and muddy and filthy and then just brush it off afterwards or hang it near the campfire on a tripod um done a f we did a few private trips in the some gap in the welsh lockdowns before christmas we were up in the woods for several days with uh, the guys from lakota outdoors and we were up there yeah for a while living out in the woods and this was my outer layer for most of that i got i think mine's a 3xl i think it might be yeah mine's a 3x european 3xl us 2xl and i've got a 50 inch chest i'm i'm a weird shape I got this so it's slightly oversized so I could wear it on top of insulated jackets like this or soft shells or even on top of a down jacket or on top of other layers so I would take this into the mountains alongside a shell layer waterproof and have this as something to throw on top of that or throw on as a windproof or as an outer layer for when I'm doing filthy jobs it's it's been really good for that it's also it's not too noisy um, and I think, I think Fjallraven are, are going to be pissed off with this because this is, what, is that about 100 quid? Or, or uh, it, less than that. Well, it was pre-Brexit, but I don't know what where we're up to <laughs> with that now and prices. I think when I looked earlier on, when I was just looking at the, the different fabrics and things, I think it was 90 euros. Yeah. Okay. So. so it's relatively inexpensive. Yeah. If you've looked at the Fjallraven Keb range, their sort of hybrid stretchy and canvas jackets that you can still wax i had their trousers and they didn't last that long to be honest this feels very much like the fjall raven keb stuff for about a third of the price so that's probably scuppered our chances of fjall raven reviews in the near future but i'm okay with that 
to be perfectly honest. This I'm not. Is, well. I like their rucksacks. Okay, um, okay, okay. <laughs> but well. that's, that's what this puts me in mind of. In terms of cut, it's a bit like uh, the Paramo Velas smocks. Yeah. The ones that have the pouch there and the side pouches and then pockets inside, but unlike the Paramo fabrics, this is spark proof ish or at least you don't worry about wearing it near a campfire and the pockets inside have got more useful things like you say you've got the clips and things but then it's a lot of them are mesh lines so that mm. when you put your hand in there doing that it's straight against your body there so you can warm your hands up quite nicely and you have got useful clips and things inside the kangaroo pouch as amy highlighted but that goes through to mesh under, underneath as well so if you wanted to keep your phone or camera batteries warm against your body but have them readily accessible you can shove them in there and there's not they're not going to be a little cold pouch they should be being warmed by your mm. body heat it's not great for retaining body heat but no you'd use a different jacket for that um and the hood the hood's quite breathable as well there's a mesh bit under the hood there so you've got you just the volume adjuster flap that goes at the back is it's mesh. like one of those flaps that you get on jackets at the back so you know when you have um, quite smart coats usually yeah. where they've got a double layer of fabric on the top but that's almost like a vent as well there's a tailoring term for that and i can't remember what it is we will insert it <laughs> here or not if we couldn't find it <laughs> um yeah and that's it so the only thing is if you're going to wax them it makes them look ancient straight away because you probably can't see that on that camera there but i'll do a close-up now there you go that's the the wax sort of bunches up anywhere that the clothing wrinkles and fjall raven does this as well it's the same problem they have um but you end up with these it's, it looks weathered it looks like someone's tried to make a new jacket look old um so they do look a bit battered it also makes it the fabric a little bit darker a few shades darker but if you're okay with that and you don't mind it looking a bit weathered but you want function rather than fashion then i would say be brave and try and wax it although i think getting hold of these things at the moment is a problem because yeah they're out of stock everywhere because they so they brought them on and then everyone bought them um but also you see there's about four million youtube videos of people reviewing these the only downside to this jacket is to do with its length and getting in and out of it it's a little bit like trying to get a snake into a sock you're trying to <laughs> wriggling and trying to get i've worn this when, Does it I've help been... when it's cold <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you um yeah i wore it to go for coffee or something with my friend because i just threw it on at home and then when you got to the cafe and i had to try and get myself out of it without stripping off every layer yeah. underneath that was yeah that's the only There's the no... only thing and to be honest it's far outweighed by the fact that you've got that slightly longer length so that you're your backside and your lower back doesn't get cold and the sleeves are also long which is good for both of us are tall yeah and sleeve length matters to be honest yeah when you do that yeah but the it's like trying to swim into it if you don't undo the zips on the side but i have got i've got a lot of smock type jackets and waterproofs i've picked up over the years people just seem to send me smocks rather than full length i don't know why but it's not as bad as some others i have um no. there's a waterproof fleece smock i think i'm reviewing next week which that is like trying to swim into a tube whereas this if you undo the side zips you can just you can put it on with some elegance but if you don't it's a bit weird so just get used to unzipping those side vents um but it's the sort of thing once you've got it on for the day you'll probably leave it on um yeah so that's the cool. calicon woods was it woodsman woodsman anorak, anorak jacket yeah. is the full title Who's next? Me. You're next. Me. Yes. So, hang on. I have to get notes for this because, um, well, this is this is the uh, part of the show where we had feedback from the people, the person who makes the product, because I've already reviewed this a little bit in audio form on one of our productions on the Angry Badger podcast. If you haven't listened to the Angry Badger podcast, then then good for you um but if you want to listen to it then there's a link in the show notes below in the description and there's this logo here which is the one to look for when you search for it on apple podcasts or spotify or anywhere else you get your pods from um so on that show i said that this was basically a big zip tie and i was going to try and go abseiling with it and yeah i had 
feedback from the uh, manufacturer. So we'll come to that in a minute. This is from a company called Core Essentials. And this has mud all over it because it's been down next to my feet there. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it wipes off, so. I'm not the man to send high fashion items to. If you want something looking, someone looking sharp and styled, then go and find somebody else. If you want somebody who can go and lie in a puddle, I'm your man. Yeah, so the, this is an interesting one because these, this brand, Core, K-O-R-E, Core Essentials, I think they're, yes. as, yeah, um, that, they make gun belts. I'm in the UK, we don't have pistols and sidearms here, or at least not in the civilian world. And if you're using, if you're in the military or the police where you do have one, then you're probably not using a full grain leather belt like this. So that idea of an EDC where you might have a pancake holster or a kidney holster or you know, you expect to find somebody with a sidearm. We've got plenty of friends and clients in the States who do that and it's for that kind of world. So this is a UK review of something I can't use to its full extent, but I can analyze its construction and things. So. The idea with those EDC belts is that they don't fold and they don't sag and they don't squish down and become uncomfortable and have a pinch point when you hang several hundred grams worth of gun and magazines and other things off it. They also say on the website, Cordu, that this can be used for survival and knives and things like that. And yeah, fine, but there are other stiff belts that do that. So think about it this way. These are big zip ties. They have a patented mechanism here which is a little clip thing like that and then you have on the underside of the belt here the, the tail end the live end of the belt you have little teeth and it does look a bit like a zip tie like a cable tie and the idea is you put it around yourself and then go like that you can hear that and it locks so it's one way and then it locks but unlike a normal cable tie you can just pull a lever underneath and undo it. So have a look on the core YouTube channel. You'll see lots of really highly produced videos of people using it with guns and shooting and someone wearing this belt, I think, in, with a suit and things. And I think they're meant to be a police officer or a police detective or somebody who wants some, something with a bit of style, but also wants to be able to, when they sit down, they want to be able to loosen the belt a, bit, a little bit to make it a little bit more comfortable. That's what you can do. You can quick release it. You don't have to do that thing which from a distance looks wrong let's let's be honest looks like you're interfering with yourself um there's no elegant way to do that but this you can just sort of do a <coughs> an adjustment and undo it so it's good for chinese or you can eat buffets <laughs> or particularly large meals <laughs> is this going to be your christmas dinner belt <laughs> No, that's sweatpants. You wear jogging bottoms for a Christmas dinner because you just you, you just prepare for the event and yeah. Um, so this is a full grain leather belt. Uh, so this is the X6, I think it is X6 gunmetal. I'm looking at the wrong page there. That's the boots. Um, X6 gunmetal buckle and brown top grain leather reinforced gun belt and the the little belt buckle comes with a little clamp here so you cut the belt to the size you need and then fold that up put it in there fold it over and clamp it down with two allen key screws hex screws and that locks it in place um so no belt holes uh the best fitting most comfortable edc gun belt you'll ever wear precise secure fit provides a smooth fast draw every time it is 800% more adjustable versus traditional gun belt with holes uh, because you've got 40 plus sizing options. So presumably that's more more notches than holes by 800%. Um, just by quarter inch at a time, each click is each click is a quarter inch. Um, I don't know whether that's a quarter inch at 100 yards or whether that's a different kind of thing. Zeroing humour. Designed to support small to medium weight firearms, four pounds max. I don't know what four pounds is in normal units. So that's freedom units. I don't understand that. Mm. Classic subtle buckle designs because no one needs to know what you're needs to know you're carrying. Okay. Leather gun belts are one and a half inch wide and one size to fit any waist from 24 inch up to 44. And then they do another size. So that's not one size then is it up to 54 inches i'm a 38 inch waist sometimes 40 depending on what 
which brand I'm using, which brand I'm buying, and the normal size fits me with about that much to spare. So there's plenty there. 30 day money back guarantee and one year warranty with patented technology. Carl from Core, if you're watching, I don't think you'll honor that warranty if I go abseiling with this. I, are you? No. I talked about this in the Angry Badger podcast, so I reviewed it there because one of the other hosts on that, the American contingent, he is a firearms trainer and he does train people with this and he uses gun belts and we talked about those mm -hmm. things. Carl said, sent us an email saying, have you reviewed the belt yet? You know, what do you think about it? Any thoughts? And we said, yes, here's the podcast episode. And his reply was to you. Hi, Amy. Thanks for getting back to me in the update. Totally understand about the delay. No problem at all. We were talking about the fact we're in another really strict lockdown in the UK. That's why we're in our field, not somewhere more interesting. Please thank Richard for talking about the belts on the podcast. Very nice. We do them in top grain leather and tactical nylon. This summer, we are going to release the first ever battle belt that Micro adjusts on the move. Thanks. A battle belt, it's... You know that thing you have for canicross and dog running with yeah. a dog? It's one of those, like, hippo pads and then things on it so you have all your gear on a belt for running and gunning and whatever your thing is americans know what that means okay. oh yeah and then notes he sent a separate email following on from the original email which i think was between carl saying oh we talked about it on an international podcast great that's brilliant then he listened to the podcast <laughs> He wasn't expecting what happened on this podcast. <laughs> no, um, he was probably expecting someone professional. And um, yeah, <clears throat> his next email said, and we don't ever recommend that anyone repel in our belt. So that is, I'm putting this in because that's core essentials disclaimer. Don't repel or abseil using just that belt. They're designed to carry gear and or guns, not repel in. They are weight rated for EDC gun carry or the range, but you should only repel in a harness. I agree with that, but it doesn't stop me doing stupid things for the sake of YouTube. And since they talked a lot about the belt costing $60, that, that being expensive, it's quite expensive. Kind of it's, it's expensive by belt costs, but I, Maybe that's because I don't spend enough on belts. I don't know. If we made them in the USA or the UK, they would cost over 100 US dollars. We have a factory in China that we oversee and have tight quality controls over it. Our belts are excellent quality. We design them in the USA and stand behind them. They also have a proprietary reinforced core that we designed and tested. It adds strength, durability, and makes them virtually indestructible. Just wanted to clarify some points. Thanks. So... I don't dislike this belt. I'm not the target audience for it, but actually I've been using it. It's gone into my usual thing. You know that ha thing of where you, if you're using, you wear, you've got like four sets of trousers in rotation, you've got stuff for getting muddy in and then stuff for going to work and meeting clients in and then stuff for taking the dog for a walk in and then outdoor work. You know, I just rotate between them and they've normally got a belt in the loops and then they're hanging over the banister. Yeah on the uh, banister drobe. Yeah, which is different to the chair drobe. So the chair drobe is- And the floor drobe. And the floor drobe, yeah. Banister drobe, because our, we live in a barn conversion, it's weird. <laughs> the, this has been in the, set, the pair of trousers that I wear for going shooting in. Um, so we've been doing some shooting, shooting with rifles and different things during lockdown and all legally and legally permitted. And it has been in there in those trousers they it's been fine it's been comfortable it's starting to wear a little bit where it's been brushed up against things but i have literally been crawling through mud wearing those trousers and getting in and out of vehicles and abrading on them so mm -hmm. given that it's actually looking quite good and it it's done that thing where they drop at the back like that so as you're sat i think that's as you sit down it pulls the belt down at the back so it's deformed a bit, but not much. And a cheaper belt would have deformed much more. It would have pinched down at the back by now, and it hasn't. So it's, it's lasted quite well. Um, so I think it's expensive for a belt, but it's lasting much, it's being more resilient and it's, being, it's got more features than a normal belt. So make of that what you will. But yeah, I, I like it and I'm not gonna, actively abseil with it without a harness as a backup but i might try and break it on a video maybe in the future if we can be asked 
Ooh. Not on a vertical face, on something steep, but not quite vertical. But it's probably the smartest belt you own at the moment. It's got the least amount of mud and dog hair on it. And bend. And kind of, we you know when leather gets older and it starts to crack in places, yeah. That's not going like, to do Like that. my face. Well, I didn't want to say anything. <laughs> okay. But you drew that comparison, not me. Is that it? So. <laughs> How do we end this show? Um, so, thank you for watching. Thank you for, if you made it through to the end, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching this far in. Uh, please like the video, subscribe to the channel. Um, we're trying to do different things during lockdown, and we like almost every other small business we have been hammered by covid and all of those things but we are moving things in a different direction so we're going to create more content do different things um we've got some secret things coming up sometime soon uh, we're also creating more audio content like this so we have other podcast titles go and have a look at at originaloutdoormedia.co.uk you should see a list of podcast titles there at the time of recording this we have the angry badger which is me and then a guy brian who is a security and surveillance specialist and then terry who we're not allowed to say who he is but we just call him terry and he's over in the united states and he is a tcsm tscm technical surveillance countermeasures technical yeah. technical yeah TSCM. tscm expert security type stuff but we yeah. don't talk about those things we talk about complete crap and <clears throat> swear and I can piss. vouch for that. Yeah. I, I produce the show and I have to wrangle them into keeping it on track every single time. Yeah. And we also have a dedicated search and rescue uh, subject podcast called Sarcast, um, which we are sometimes sarcastic on. Um, I wasn't really, I wasn't aware that was a term that sarcast, that you could use sarcastic as shortened to sarcast but it makes sense now yeah. now i say it out loud wow. um so that is a search and rescue podcast which is uh, hosted by myself and a guy called ben who is in a lowland search and rescue team and i'm no longer am but i was in a mountain rescue team in north wales and i train search and rescue people now and they we have a hope we have a sponsor on there who comes in for our gear segment so we have all those other shows to listen to as well there's no video content to go along with them no. but if you follow the links in the description thing below it'll take you there thank you for watching that sort of rambling anything else thank you very much no uh, apart from that those who have listened to this as a podcast so who might just be listening through their ear holes as we like to say and um, i probably haven't seen anything that we've been trying to show and tell on the camera uh, thank you for persevering and um we well we look forward to the next episode yes Thank you for your this. support. Thank yes. you for your support and thank you for enabling us. It's your <laughs> fault, really. Right. Yeah. Okay, we'll leave it to that. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 What if my voice break then? I don't know. <laughs>